and welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle. And you saw the title to this video, Shooting the Clown, or What Happens If I Shoot the Clown? Now, you're like, what are you talking about? In the last two weeks, maybe it's been three by now, but at least in the last month, there have been two separate instances in the United States where people put themselves in a position where a justifiable self, a, a concealed carrier or a citizen could have been justified in shooting them down even though they didn't intend to be shot down. What, are the, what am I talking about? Well, if you listen to the radio, you know, we, we student of the gun radio, we talked about this on the radio, but uh, we had an instance where a, a school staff members walked into a staff meeting with ski masks on and blank firing guns and just started shooting or pretending to shoot, you know, walked into the room with blank firing guns, pow, 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 pow. And uh, just to, you know, show the seriousness of taking an active shooter or active shooter training seriously. We, we want to reinforce that. That's crazy. Well, and then just recently, it was similar but not the same. We had a movie theater manager hire some actors to dress up and walk into the movie theater during the premiere of Iron Man 3. Well, some of the actors were dressed in all black with fake rifles, like fake M16 AR rifles, just like the lunatic in Colorado was dressed, sends him into the premiere of a movie. Good idea or bad idea? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say bad idea. Now, the big question that people have out there, if you are a no-kidding good guy, you're a legitimate lawful citizen, you carry a firearm as a personal defense tool every day as you go about your business, you say, man, that is scary because if I was in a situation where someone runs in with a blank firing gun and starts popping people, I think it's real, I shoot him down, and then I'm in trouble. Okay, or um, Johnny Numskull there at the movie theater I'm sitting ready to watch Iron Man 3. A guy walks in the door dressed in all black with, a, with an M16 or an AR, uh, just like the guy in Colorado did. And I jump up and like, drop it, Johnny. And I smoke him. And you say, and then I find out it was an actor, and now I'm in trouble. You say, well, you may or may not be in trouble, depending on how you actually behaved in that circumstance and what was the information that you had at that moment in time. Not what you found out later. Uh, as a police officer, this is something that you go through a lot. There are a lot of people out there that are distraught people that they want to kill themselves, but they don't have the, the courage or the chutzpah to do it themselves. So what they'll do is they'll take an empty gun and go walk into a crowd and start pointing the gun at people uh, until the police show up, or they'll point a gun at a police officer and the officer shoots him down and they die. And then they, what do they find out? Well, they find out later that the gun was empty, no ammunition in it. And your question, the question would be, well, is the officer liable now, for you know, um, is he liable for you know a murder charge or a you know negligent homicide charge or you know manslaughter or what have you? Well, the answer is no, and the reason is because in that circumstance, the officer, all he had to go on was there's a person acting irrationally, pointing a gun at other people. That is what I know at this moment in time. That's the little snapshot of the overall scenario. I don't know the story leading up to that. I don't know what we're going to find out later. All I know is what the facts that are present. So let's say you're in a movie theater and some guy thinks it's going to be funny to come running in the theater dressed all black with an uh, AR or a fake AR that looks like a real gun, just like that numbskull did in Aurora, Colorado. And you think, Oh crap, this is a copycat killer. He's about to murder me and my family. I have to do something. So you smoke this dude. And after it, you know it's all over and done with, you know they say, "Oh, it was a fake gun or it was an empty gun or whatever and he couldn't have done it anyway." And what you need to understand is you can only be legally, you can only be judged by the amount of information that you possessed at that moment in time. Same thing with the uh, the staff meeting. 
And people say, well, man, but what if, what if the, what if the uh, theater had a no gun sign and I just ignored their no gun sign and I, wa I went in and this guy comes in the theater with a gun and I shoot him. Now I'm in trouble. Well, you have to think about it like this. Is violating the no gun sign is probably a misdemeanor, right? Or, you know, ignoring the no gun sign is it, probably a misdemeanor. Depending on your jurisdiction, uh, th there's different levels, but generally it's a misdemeanor. If someone comes in and kills your family, it's kind of a serious issue, right? You don't know. The point is, is you don't know. When a guy walks in the theater, walks into the classroom, walks into the, the school board meeting with what looks to you like is a real gun and starts behaving as if he's going to shoot humans, you better do something quick, fast, and in a hurry. You can't, that now is not the time to second guess yourself. And I'm not telling you just start smoking people. No. What I'm telling you is you need to refer back to the big three. What are the big three for justifiable use of force? Ability. Okay, what do I know? I see a person, he has a gun. Okay, ability. Opportunity. Well, if we're in the same area of operation, he has a gun, I have a gun, or he has a gun, he has the opportunity to shoot me, to do me harm. Okay, that's two. Now, the third one, and this is the big one, is what is uh, the intent or am I in jeopardy? Is he placing me in jeopardy or his, is he displaying the intent to do me harm? We talked about this before, about, you know, a police officer, you're filling up your gas tank and you walk into the quickie lube there or quickie mart or stop and rob or what have you. And there's a cop over there filling up his coffee cup. Well, he's got a gun. He's where you are. Does that mean he's going to kill you? No, because he doesn't have the intent. He's not demonstrating the intent. And what you need to be able to say after it's all over with is you need to be able to describe to a jury of 12 or to a judge or to a, uh, a grand jury or what have you is what actions prompted your action. That's what you need to be, you know, not I saw a gun. Just because you see a gun doesn't mean you can start shooting up the landscape. Seeing a gun is not good enough. Seeing a knife is not good enough. Say, oh, I saw a gun. Okay. What was the person doing? And that is what you're going to be judged by. What were their actions? You know, if you have the, and for instance, you know, the one, the school board issue, let's say there's, you know, a guy who comes into the school board meeting and he's a lawful concealed carry guy. And uh, even though it's technically against the law or it's a misdemeanor or what have you, for him to have showed up for the meeting with a gun on him, let's just play devil's advocate gear and uh, he's in the meeting and they're doing over their stuff and you know Tweedledee and Tweedledum bust in the room with ski masks on and blank firing pistols and start going pop 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 this guy's like holy crap pulls out his gun and smokes a dude boom 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 and they say oh you just killed two innocent people that only had blank firing guns er, time out what would a reasonable person have thought was happening at that moment well the, a reasonable person would have thought two people with ski masks walk into a room, they have objects that look like firearms in their hands, and they start engaging and making noise with those guns. I don't have time to go, hmm, let me, let me wait and see how this plays out. Um, is that person dead yet? Uh, no. Okay, in, a, in a hostile, you know, a deadly force situation, you don't have the time to wait and analyze and think, well, let's just kind of see what happens here. Because the next person that dies could be you. And a lot of people that die in violent assaults are people that hesitated. You know, as a police officer, talk to a vet cop. They'll tell you, you know, after investigating, they're like, well, this person could have saved their own life up to this point, but they just kept, you know, their inaction caused them to expire or to be beaten to death or to be hospitalized by you know and when you go back very rarely does you know the guy just jump out of a tree and start hammering on you there are things that lead up to that and your action or your inaction can decide whether or not you're going to live die go to the hospital be maimed so when it comes to shooting these clowns uh you know some guy walks into a building with a blank firing gun and a ski mask on and starts hammering and that guy gets shot if he gets shot, he is shot because of his actions. His actions led up to that. And you, 
will be judged by the information that you had in that small little snapshot of time. Not what did we find out afterwards, what was the, you know, the precursor, what led up to this. You don't know that. What they're going to judge you by, and the only thing that they can legally, by precedent, judge you by is the amount of, and I hate this term, I hate the term reasonable man, but basically they're going to apply the reasonable man test to your actions. Would any other person who was in a similar or identical, actually, situation as you, would they have behaved in a similar fashion? And that is going to be the big test. And if the answer is, yeah, anybody else, anybody on this jury of 12, if they were in a room and a dude walked in with a ski mask and a gun and started shooting, would have thought, this is the end, I'm about to be killed. That is what you're going to be judged by. So don't worry so much about, well, man, I, I got to hold back because what if it's a fake gun? Or what if it's empty or not loaded, you know? Uh, or, or what if he's just kidding? Well, he might be. But are you willing to gamble with your life? And that's the, the whole reason you're carrying a gun is because you're not a gambler. I mean, if you're like, whatever, I probably will never have to use it, then don't carry a gun. Just go on about your life. So if you have to shoot the clown, you're going to be judged by the information that you possessed at that moment in time. And that's the important thing that you need to keep in mind. Okay, product of the week. We didn't do a product of the week last week. Uh, we took a day off for Mother's Day. Hope you guys all had a great Mother's Day, whether if you're a mother out there or if you have a mother. Uh, but it's getting into swimsuit season. It's getting into the summertime. And I don't know about you, but I don't feel comfortable being completely disarmed, even in a bathing suit. So what do I carry in a bathing suit? Well, I at very minimum, I'll carry this guy right here. That is the Tasman. It's made by a company called Spyderco. It's made of their H1 rust-resistant steel. And at very least, if I'm in my bathing suit, at very least, I can have something on me, some type of a tool, whether it's a, a rescue tool or a self-defense tool, I'll have a tool. Uh, this cool story about this knife right here this knife actually i had to cut a, a gator loose from a fishing line he was tangled all up in a fishing line and i was able to row over and and cut him loose and free him with this knife right here so kind of a cool story but uh, we'll put the link up for you guys right down there below for the tasman h1 steel blade from spider co no for all things student of the gun where are you going to go well of course you're going to go to studentofthegun.com